the like I said, the stock price is at $85.18 a share. Yahoo analysts revised their estimate, but believe it can go up to $114.86 a share in the next 12 months. Hey guys, I wanted to drop you the analysis on this company about a week ago, only there was a problem. Well, one, I was having a problem with audio on my computer, but the other thing is they were coming up to an earnings report and I didn't know what was going to happen with that earnings report. And I'm very fortunate because after that earnings report, the stock dropped dramatically. This is a daily chart. Now, if we go back to the weekly chart, we see the stock drop dramatically, but now it started to move back up. So I'm going to provide you the earnings for this stock. Notice now that the price of the stock is $85.18 a share, which you can see on the left side of your screen. I break my stocks down into tiers, three, steer, three, tiers, three stars is the most fundamentally sound tier, two stars is beneath that, one star is the least fundamentally sound, but still fundamentally sound enough to be on my watch list. This is a two star, and you'll see why I rated as that when we go through the analysis. In any event, the like I said, the stock price is at $85.18 a share. Yahoo analysts revised their estimate, but believe it can go up to $114.86 a share in the next 12 months. Now, I put out of this week's stock winners on my YouTube channel every week, letting you know fundamentally sound stocks that are moving up from their annual low price. I also put out a this month's option pick where I pick one of the most promising stocks from that this week's stock winners and put it up as an option pick. I actually used to do a this week's option picks. However, I'm not doing a this week's option picks on the YouTube channel anymore. I am doing one option pick a month on the YouTube channel. That's this month's option pick. But there is still a this week's option picks. The this week's option picks, and I actually just bought one Wednesday night. I told you guys about it Thursday morning before markets opened. And as of today, this one day, it's at a $284.34 gain. That's 33.03%. That is inside of my Patreon channel. So if you go to Uncle Dwayne's watch list, the homepage for the YouTube channel, you will see my link for my Patreon channel. And when you go in the Patreon channel, there are three options. One is this week's option picks, where you will still get the weekly option picks, and those will be $25 a month for that membership. There's upcoming news on stocks on the watch list, where it's not just the finances, but upcoming news and analysis as well. That will be $25 separately. That's a separate package. And video calls with Uncle Dwayne. Maybe you want a video call with me where you can ask some questions about investing. Well, that will be, you can have two video, two 30-minute video calls a month for $25. So, in any event, Let's jump into the analysis on this video. 
So the stock that we're going through today is MGP Ingredient Sync, ticker symbol MGPI. And I already told you it dropped dramatically from the earnings report. We see it starting to move back up now. Now currently, it is at $85.18 a share. Earnings per share is $4.80 a share. And the current PE is 17.75. Now they just recently had an earnings report. So we don't have to worry about the earnings report for a little while, for a few months at least. The earnings report dropped on February 22nd. And Yahoo analysts estimate that this company can go up to $114.86 a share in the next 12 months from its current price of $85.18 a share. So if we look at the PE for this company over the last five years, it was 24.38 in 2018, 20 or 18.26 in 2019, 9.33 in 2020, 19.96 in 2021. I'm sorry, 10.51 in 2021 and 15.21 in 2022. Right now, the PE is at 18.75. What that low PE tells us is how low a stock can drop. So, for example, if this stock was to drop to its low PE of, I'm not going to count the one in 2020, that was COVID lockdowns, 9.31, 9.33. But let's go, go to 10.51 in 2021 and multiply that by the current earnings per share 4.80 that gives us $50.44 so what that tells us is in all probability if the PE would have fall to 10.51 again, it would drop as low as $50.44 a share. However, the PE right now is 17.75. We see in 2018, the low PE was 24.38. In 2019, it was 18.26. So it is very possible that this is the lowest PE for this year. It doesn't go any lower. It's also very possible that it will drop lower. So, like we said, Yahoo analysts estimate that this stock can move up to $114.86 in the next 12 months. We see that from the low price to the high price in terms of PE. It was an increase of 78.19% in 2018, 104.63% in 2019, 131.30% in 2020, 89.96% in 2021, and 66.93% in 2022. But it's a lot lower this year. This year, it's projected that the increase could just be 
27.33%. It could be much higher, but it could just be an increase of 27.33%. Now, guys, we are going to jump into the fundamentals for this company. But before that, I'd like you to listen to a quick message. I want to talk to you about an experience that I had, which can dramatically improve your investing success. So I was recently speaking to a family member who I showed some things about investing and picking stocks, which really worked out for her. It worked out for her so well that her investing with options particularly dramatically improved. We know options deals with stocks. So in any event, she was sharing with me a new strategy she's using and explaining to me how she just recently ended up making a lot of money on NVIDIA. What I explained to her is that my my strategy is successful as well. I don't feel there's any need to change it. And at the time I was speaking, though I was pretty sleepy, but after I got up, I said, you know what, let me address this. And I explained to her that in my strategy, I already had NVIDIA on my watch list. The only difference is at the time we had that conversation, NVIDIA was $788.17 a share. I actually showed her a screenshot of where NVIDIA moved up from. And I sent her the properties of one of my files, NVIDIA Corporation. This is the stock analysis on NVIDIA that I created, and you see the date here is created, June 30th of 2022. That's approximately 20 months earlier. Also notice it says, modified May 27th of 2023. And I'll explain why I show that to you in a second. In any event, I did this analysis 20 months ago and when I did this analysis, NVIDIA was not $780, it was $145.23 a share. Now, if anybody had bought 100 shares of NVIDIA at that time, it would have cost them $14,523. Unless they were using margin, it would have cost around 7000 something. And they would have been able to sell those shares for $64,294 20 months later. That's a 442.70% gain. But that's not why I'm putting this little video together. I'm putting this together to explain to you something. Currently, the only thing I do is I check the financials for these companies for the most for the five most recent years and I check to see I only check them when they're at their annual low price. Every stock that's at its annual low price and it's fundamentally sound based on the last five years of financial research, I add to the watch list. What I don't do is I don't check for research news. So what I've decided to start doing is for the stocks that's in this week's stock winners, not all of them because I have a lot in there, but for the ones with the most potential, we will now be doing not only five-year financial analysis at the annual low price, which we currently do. We will also be, which you will find if you go to 
my YouTube channel, Uncle Dwayne's Watchlist, you'll now see a link for Patreon. If you click on that link and go into Patreon, we will also be doing upcoming news on the stocks on the watch list. So, it will show you fundamentally sound stocks moving up from their annual low price, but it will also include information such as upcoming news with that company, risk factors for the company to consider, upcoming projects for the company, things that they could be working on to make them a lot more money, and much more. Because realize when you're working with stocks, you're basically working with companies, stocks or shares of a company. I will also have this week's option picks for those who are familiar with it will be changed on the YouTube channel to this month's option pick and the weekly option picks will be moved into the Patreon channel. And also if you want a video call with Uncle Dwayne to discuss anything concerning investments, you'll get two 30 minute video calls a month and each of these individual packages are $25. So those will be moved inside of the Patreon. There'll still be a this week's winning stocks, but the more advanced analysis with news and so forth will be inside of the Patreon channel. Now that we've heard that, let's look at the income statement for this company. And we see that in 2018, this company made $376,089,000. And after paying all expenses, they retained $36,576,000. That is a 9.73% profit margin. Not spectacular, not horrible. It's just about middle of the road, which I see for all five years. Now, we don't have the 2023 figures on this company yet, so I'm just doing 2018 to 2022. So for 2022, they made $362,745,000 sales and revenue, less than 2018 but their profit margin increased. Of that 362,745,000, they retained 38,540,000 after paying all expenses for a profit margin of 10.62%. In 2020, they made 395,521,000. That was an increase over 2018 and 2019. And of that money they retained after paying all expenses, 40,084,000. That was a 10.13% profit margin. That's decent. A decent increase in sales and revenue and a decent profit margin from 1062 to 10.13. Now in 2021, their sales and revenue really jumped. 626,720,000. And of that money, they retained 90,559,000 after paying all expenses. So that was a decent net income as well as a decent sales and revenue, giving them a profit margin that year of 14.46%, the best yet. Then in 2022, they increased even more with sales and revenue. 
782,358,000 and retained 108,591,000 after paying all expenses for a profit margin of 13.88%. So, their profit margin is increasing over the last five years and their sales and revenue increasing dramatically over those last five years from three hundred and seventy six million to seven hundred and eighty two million. Now when we go down to return on equity, we see their return on equity in 2018, it was 18.16%. 2019, it was 16.68%. 2020, it was 15.27%. 2021, it was 14.06%. And 2022, it was 14.56%. So... It's sort of middle of the road for return on equity. It could be a little higher, but I would consider it decent. And when you take the debt to equity into consideration, the debt to equity is really from great to really good. 2018, it was 37.95%. 2019, 39.63%. 2020, 39.63%. 2021, 61.65%. Increase a bit, but not much. And 2022, 55.33%. And that debt to equity should tell me that this is a decent balance sheet with the current assets exceeding the current liability by years and the total assets exceeding the total liability by years. Now this company does pay a dividend that means they're giving money to the shareholders, rewarding the shareholders for each share. They paid 5,500,000 in dividends in 2018, 6,856,000 in 2019, 8,188,000 in 2020, 10,017,000 in 2021 and 10,646,000 in 2022. If we look at the five years listed here, 2018 through 2022, each year they bought back more of their own shares of stock, which we love to see a company do. In 2018, they bought back $2,324,000 worth of their own stock. In 2019, they bought back $5,489,000 worth. 2020, $4,411,000 worth. 2021, 767,000 worth and 2022 715,000 worth now we like to see how much free cash flow extra money a company has at the end of these years, especially if they give a, di a dividend, because that free cash flow is where they pay their dividends from, and it lets us know if they can afford to be giving a dividend. 
if after they give that dividend, their free net cash flow is negative, that means they're giving you a dividend that they really can't afford to give you, but they're just giving it to you to make you stick around as a shareholder. So, in 2018, they had 2435000 in free cash flow. But after paying their dividend, they had negative 3065000 Couldn't afford to pay a dividend that year. In 2019, they had 2992000 in free cash flow. But after paying their dividend, they had negative 3864000 They really couldn't afford to pay a dividend that year. But in 2020, they had 36460000 in free cash flow. After paying the dividend, they still had 28272000 So that year, they could definitely afford to pay a dividend. And moving forward, in 2021, they had 40874000 in free cash flow. So it's increasing. And after paying the dividend, they still had 30857000 And in 2022, they had 43763000 in free cash flow. But after paying the dividend, they still had 33117000 So these last three years, they definitely could afford to pay the dividend and still had free cash flow left over. Now this company, their, well, let's start with their book value. Their book value is $37.23. I really don't concern myself much with book value if they're buying back shares of their own stock. And I explained that in a video on the channel that explains about book value, the truth about book value. But their PB ratio is 2.29. The beta explaining how volatile that stock is, if it's moving more or less than the market, which moves at 1, is 0 0.78, which signifies that this stock is less volatile than the regular market. They, um, the last dividend they gave was $0.12 cents a share. They have $22.02 .02 million outstanding shares. And of those $22.02 .02 million outstanding shares, 36.88% of them are owned by insiders. That those are people who work for or involved with the company. That's an astounding number for insiders owning a stock. Generally, you may find under 1% or 2% of insiders owning a stock. But this one has 36.88%. That can signify that the people who work for the company have a lot of confidence in the company. It can also signify that the only retirement plan that the company gives is allowing you to buy their stock. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying what it could signify. The amount owned by, owned by institutions those are banks, large institutions, and so forth, 70.81%. And the PEG ratio for this stock is 1.76, with a dividend yield of under 1%. It's 0 0.5C, 5.3. Now, David J. Colo is the president, CEO, and director of this company. And MGP Ingredients is in the beverages, wineries, and distilleries industry, consumer defensive sector. In other words, they make 
alcohol, alcohol and some recipes, I believe, but primarily alcohol. I will drop a video in the channel letting you know a little more about what they do. So in any event, that is the analysis on MGP ingredients, guys. Look forward to speaking to you in the next video.